We're learning the second sikha of Chelek Tezayin on page 13 of Parshas Shemais. This shir is being learned to Lenishmas Rab Yasef bin Yamin ben Rab Menashe Koltman. The Pasik here is speaking about when Moshe Rabbeinu was born and there was the Gzeireh, that all boys born should be thrown into the Nilos. So then his sister went and took him, placed him in a basket and put him al Sfasa Ya'ir. So what's the meaning of Sfasa Ya'ir? It can be translated in two ways. Either it could mean she placed him at the river bank, not in the water, or it could mean at the edge of the river, inside the water. Zok the Targum, so the Targum says, al Kaif Nara, that she placed him on the river bank near the river. From them is Mochach, so from this Targum it's clear. As Yecheved, Hotiteves Goime, this uh, basket with her brother, with Meshav Mitmeshen, Avegeleik, Nitendem Yergufe. She didn't place him inside the water. Not if them Yaboshe Breg, Levendem Yer. Rather, she placed him on dry land, at the river bank, near the water. Aber, however, from Hemshechap Sipor in Pasik is Mashma, when you look at the continuation of the story, it seems as the Tevat Sachgefunen, Nitdot Nisvasayer that the basket with Moshe Rabbeinu was not at the river bank, nor in them suf was in them yoy. It was in the swamp, which is inside the yoy, inside the Nilus. Of the Pasik zogd weiter, as the Pasik later says, Vatikra shmoi Moshe geime, ki minamaye mishisihu, that the daughter of Pare, when she went and brought Moshe out of the water, and she didn't know who this is, and she gave him a name, what name does she give him? That I took him out of the water, minamaye. So it seems like that Moshe Rabbeinu was found in the water. So what happened over here? How did he end up in the water? Is this Masbid the Ragachover? So the Ragachover explains as follows: Vibal tas heima yo evdim lenilos. Since the Mitzvim would serve the Nilos as their avodah as their God, had yech had yecheved nit getart matzal zayn Moshe and dorch harayin legin di teven di yoyer. So yecheved was not allowed to save Moshe by placing him into the actual Nilos itself. So the halach is, as metarzich nit banutzen bet avedizara, afilat zli batzala. You're not allowed to use avedizara even for the sake to save yourself. So we're here to save the life of Moshe Rabbeinu. As long as the nilos is being served as an avedizara, you're not allowed to use it to save his life. On the far, so therefore, vatosim baso falsfasiyar. So she places him in the swamp, but it's really at the river bank. It wasn't inside the water. After the Pasik says that the daughter of Parai goes down to, to bathe in the, in the uh, river or into the in Nilus, Fasmaint and Chazal tell us what does this mean? She didn't just simply go to bathe herself, but she yarda lirchaitz migilule avia. She went down to wash herself off of the Avedizara of her father. So with this, she annulled the Avedizara of the Nilus. And Vishuv Basa Teva And then this basket with Mesh Rabbeinu flowed into the river. And now his, he could be in the river, and that's where his life is going to be saved. And it did float into the river. That's the Pshat of what happened over here. Now there's another Medrash that speaks about this as well. The Medrash Zak, the Medrash tells us, Velama Hishlichu Why did they take Mesh Rabbeinu and throw him and put him into the um, into the river, into the Nilus? In order that the astrologers and Mitzrayim should think that Meshe Rabbeinu, the savior of the Yidin, was already thrown into the water and they should stop searching for who this, uh, who this child is and that, and that Gzeda should be over. So the Rebbe explains. This Gzeda, that every boy that's born should be thrown into the Nilus. How did this come about? It's because the astrologers saw as Mashiach Shal Yisrael that the savior of Yidin is going to be punished with water. That's what they saw. So the far hot Yecheved that rain geworfen Mashiach in Yair. So therefore Yecheved said, so let's take Mashiach Rabbeinu and throw him, so to speak, into the river. And then, once Moshe Rabbeinu was placed in the river, in this basket, so then they will see that, they'll, they'll know that Moshe Rabbeinu was thrown into the water, and they won't anymore search for him, and immediately after this happened, they actually annulled their decree. 
as this is bottled geworden and durch them, the gzeire, kol haben ayiloi, da yoyre tashlichu. So by placing Moshe Rabbeinu in the basket, in the water, this annulled the decree of all children being thrown into the water. So now what comes out of here is as follows, that we have two different things that happened over here. Number one, when Moshe Rabbeinu flows into the water, so this is at the time when the Avedizara of the Nilus was annulled, and also when Moshe Rabbeinu was placed into the water, so this is what caused that the Gzeda of all the Bonim, all the boys born, should be thrown into the Nilos, was also annulled. So Ale and Yonim from Teres and Betachlis Adiuk. Everything in Teres is precise. It's Vashtandik, so therefore we understand as the Itzvein and Yonim, Bittl was some Zachayv Geton Beshaychus. These two things that were annulled here, in connection to the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu was thrown into the water. Aleph number one, their bittel have a desire of nilos. That what made it possible for Moshe Rabbeinu to flow into the water, or to float it, that he was there on the riverbank, and then it, it, his, his, the basket floated and went into the water. This was when the, 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 the have desire was bottled. That's number one. And also, Be'ez bittel ha'gzeire from kola ben goyme. And the fact that him being thrown into the water annulled the decree of the Mitzrayim to throw all the, the, the boys born into the water. So these two points, being mevatled of the Zara of the Nilos and being mevatled the Gzeda of Kola Ben Ayiloit are related to one another. And both of them are related to Meisha Rabbeinu. He's the cause of the Bittl of the Gzeda of Kola Ben Ayiloit. And also, he's uh, flowing into the river only when the Avedizara is bottled. So this machine shall Yisrael. So what's, what's the connection here? Why are these two things connected? And both of these are specifically accomplished through Meishe Rabbeinu. So we'll understand this. Durch Maz Bezayin, dem Teichim Pnimi, in dem Gzeire, Kol Haben HaYiloi, Da Yaire Tashlichu. We first need to understand on a deeper level, what is really the intention of the Mitzrayim when they made this gzeda that all baby boys born should be thrown into the Nilus? From them was the Teireh that sailed, nit nor vegan dem klolis gzeda from Parai. From the fact that the Teireh doesn't just tell us about the gzeda of Parai in general terms, which is that in Benu v'amitan I say, that all baby boys should be killed. But also how this should be done, that that they should be thrown into the Nilus. Let's move on, so we understand that this detail of how this is going to be done is also relevant. As this is, it's not just a detail of the Gzeda, or a detail that explains the reason for this Gzeda. As durch dem, was rosh, a machine, shall Yisrael, be maim and Yidin, that since the astrologers saw that the Savior of Yidin will be punished with water, after the far geyze given, kol ha-ben ha-yiloi, da yo'eret ha-shlichu. So he thought that the decree should be that let's fulfill this right now and throw him into the Nilus now. So it explains why he chose dafke this gzeire. Varum, now this is not an adequate explanation why the Pasuk has to tell us of this. Because sof sof, my nafkemine from wissen dem prat. Why is it necessary to know this detail that this is what the gzeda is? Was damals ersh vrekzech my time? And then you ask the question: Why was this the gzeda? Why did Pari want dafke in this eifin? And then you give the answer that the reason is because they saw that the leader of Eden will be punished with water. If you won't give the reason in the first place, so you won't have to explain. Or well, again, if you won't give the way of how Pari wants to fulfill his Gzeda in the first place, so then you won't have to give a reason for it. So this whole detail is extra. In the end of the day, there's no reason to, for the Teireh to point this out. So nor, so rather, the reason why the Teireh tells us, not only the actual Gzeda, but also how the Gzeda will be fulfilled, this is an Indian Ikri in Golis Mitzrayim. Because this is something over here that was very uh, critical to the whole Golis of Mitzrayim. This gzeda of the way the ha'yoyre tashlichu, the way they're going to be killed, expresses the whole entire content of what Golis Mitzrayim Beruchnius was all about. The beer in them explanation here is the tachlis umuchovim from gzeres para is bashtanen in ha'yoyre tashlichu in nilus. This was para's objective to take the Eden and to throw them into the Nilus, which is the Aved Zara from Mitzrayim. To take Yidin, this is not only a Gashmi as the Gagalus, but the Ruchni as the Gagalus was, that Yidin should be thrown into the Aved Zara of Mitzrayim. 
Das heißt, Parai hat gewollt, dass jeden sollen werden hereingeworfen und der Trunken in der Avedesare von Mitzrayim. Parai's desire was that the Yidin should be thrown into, they should be immersed and they should be drowning in the Avedesare of Mitzrayim. That's why the Torah brings up this point. Das was die Mitzrayim haben gedient zum Nilus. So let's understand on a deeper level, what is this Avedesare? It's a strange thing that the Mitzrayim are serving the Nilus as their Avedesare. Why? So the reason why they served Avedizar as a Nilos is Bepashtas, so simply it's understood, given the far. The reason was, was at that Taich is given by Derech HaTeva, the Mokif and Zer Panasa. Naturally, this was the source of their entire Panasa. He do as it's known as Mitzrayim, a land where it's getting with Cain Regens. And it's a place where it doesn't rain ever. Und it's smiche von Tvu of a Chulu, so then how does anything grow? It's verbunden mit dem, was the Nilos is Eule und Maschke de Felder. That the Nilos flows over, and it irrigates the fields. That's their only source of water. Everything grows from the Nilos. So therefore, this can bring, this can lead to make a mistake and to convince yourself. As the Parnasse on Chiyune from Mitzrayim, Kunt Chasvashalom mit von Eibishten. That the Parnasse, the livelihood of Mitzrayim, God forbid, does not come from the Eibishten. You see that the source comes from the water of the Nilos that irrigates the, uh, that irrigates the fields. If you live in a place where you will rely on rain, so you raise your eyes above to heaven and you hope for the rain to come. So there you clearly feel that the rain is dependent on the Ebishter. And the Nilos is Eulu Mashke. The Nilos comes and it overflows and it irrigates the fields. Is Nit Nikher the Uphengekeit from the Ebishter? So here you don't see the dependence on the Ebishter. For the, even for the Teva, that the way it happens in the world, but you don't see that the Abish is controlling this Teva, and therefore you could eventually come to the mistake to think that the Teva has a Kayach of its, of its own. It's not Tolly and the Abish at all. Now, this is Tolly and Teva for Nilus. It's the nature of the Nilus itself. And the Far is this Givaren, the Avedizara from Mitzrayim. That's the reason why the Nilus became the Avedizara that the Mitzrayim served. So with this we understand what really the Gzeir of Pari is all about. That the Yidin should be thrown into this Nilus. That Yidin should also become subservient and throw, throw themselves under the laws of nature. That things with them should also be everything according to nature without recognizing the Eibishter that's within nature. In order that this Gzeire of throwing Yidin into the Nilos, in other words, into the Kayach of Teva, should actually have its effect and it should rule over Yidin, is das durch dem, was bei Zeh is freer given, the Yiridim Mitzrayim. So the stages to this, this was only possible after the Yidin come down to Mitzrayim. Called man says any given in Eretz Yisrael as as long as Yidden war in Eretz Yisrael, which is Eretz Asher Gaimei Eni Avayi LeKechaba, a land where the Eibushter's eyes are upon it constantly, which means min Zed BeGilui, where the Eibushter is Mashgiach Al Kof Pratu Prat. Eretz Yisrael is a place where you can see openly how the Eibushter is orchestrating everything and every detail that happens. Was das direkt zu chayis eichen dem, which is expressed also by the fact, was Eretz Yisrael is allemal given a land was limtara shemayim tishtemayim. It's a land that relies on rain in the specific seasons, only in the summer when it rains, that, that that's how everything grows in Eretz Yisrael. Befrat wie Chazal zogin, and not only does it rely on rain like in other places in the world, but the Gemara says, Eretz Yisrael mashka isa kodesh baruch hu in Eretz Yisrael, the rain there comes from the Ebeshter himself. In the rest of the world, the Ebeshter brings the rain through a shliach. So when you live in such a place like Eretz Yisrael, there's no room at all for atos, for the mistake of that a person should look at what he accomplished and say that it's my might, it's the nature of the world and what I have done that brought me about this chayel, this riches that I had. And he says to himself, look, I plowed and I planted and this is enough of what I have done here. You can very easily see as who that it's the Eibishter that gives you the ability to do everything you accomplish. This is when they are in Eretz Yisrael. Even more than this. As long as Yaakov and his children were alive, 
Even after they came to Mitzrayim, so the Gzeira of Pare and the Eden was not possible to take effect at all. Since when they were in Eretz Yisrael, so they openly saw as is that everything, even within nature, depends on the Eibish there. The far, so therefore, as a filament, there's an coming in an art where that's a even when they arrive to a place where you do not see the reliance on the Ebishter in the same way, and all you see is the nature alone. This, however, did not cause them to forget and to completely hide over the truth. The free the and course, what they've seen with their own eyes before of godliness. And this had an effect on them, as in Mitzrayim, even coming into Mitzrayim, the idea that they should still have at least the knowledge, and an even from Avon of even if they can't see it anymore, but they could still have the understanding and the recognition, as Teva, that the Teva itself is also controlled by the Ebishter. So therefore, as long as, as one of the Shvatim were alive, the Gzeira of Parai wasn't a possibility, Bechlal. We're talking over here about the deeper understanding of what this Gzeira is. The Gzeira that Yidin should be thrown under Teva, without having the recognition that the Abish controls Teva. al Funes, just like the concept of a miracle, Bechlal, what does the word Nes in Lashon Kaidish mean? It also means Lashon Harama, to lift up, which means as Nes, in Teva. If it's lifting up, so that means it's lifting up something. What is it lifting up? It's lifting up the nature itself. In other words, the approach and the understanding a person has regarding nature, when a ness happens, it's not just this extraordinary occurrence that a person says, oh, this is outside of nature. What it does is it opens up your eyes to actually see what the teva itself is. It brings you to see that even nature itself is also constantly being orchestrated by the Ebishter himself. So this is what the Yaakov and the Shvatim had, that they saw openly the Ebishter, the Ashkoch HaPratis and Eretz Yisrael. So therefore, even when they come to a place where things could only be seen naturally, nevertheless, they still have the recognition that it's being controlled by the Ebishter. No, nochtem, vivayomos, Yosef, v'cholecha, v'cholah deirahu. After Yosef and his brothers and the entire generation that came from Eretz Yisrael passes away, as an anit give libum for divas and a given in Eretz Yisrael, there was no one remaining from those that came from Eretz Yisrael. In the footnote, the Rebbe discusses that seemingly there were some that remained, but uh, the Rebbe clarifies that, in other words, meaning at least the majority of the generation passed away. Ubemele is gevaran a full shtendike yirid in Mitzrayim in an hagesateva. This is the real yirid, the real descent into Mitzrayim, not only physically to the land of Mitzrayim, but now being in a place where all you see is nature, and you don't know of anything other than you see over here. They didn't have that experience of Eretz Yisrael. This is what made it possible for them, for Parai to make his Gzeireh, to throw the Yidin into the Nilos, meaning that Yidin should think and have the outlook that nature is in control of what happens in this world. So as we see over here, the Rebbe is explaining that there are three stages in Klal Yisrael. There's when they are in Eretz Yisrael, when they're in a place where they see godliness openly, when things are clear, directly to see it. Then there's when you come down to Mitzrayim, but you still have that impression of what you saw in Eretz Yisrael that gives you the right outlook regarding the nature of Mitzrayim. And then you have the final Yerida, where you, where you do not even have at all that experience of Eretz Yisrael, the next generation, and here Parai wanted to implement this Gzeira to completely tear them away from what they heard and what, they, what their Amunah that they had from before, that everything is controlled by the Ebishter. As we'll see later on in the Sikha, the Rebbe will discuss these three stages. The Reinformations. So here, when Yidin are in Mitzrayim, and the main exile of Mitzrayim is not just a physical Golos, but this Ruchni is the Gagala. So here is where Moshe Rabbeinu comes to redeem the Yidin. He's Mashiach Shri Yisrael, he's the redeemer of Yidin, while Er is the Raya Mehemna. Moshe Rabbeinu is called the faithful shepherd, which means, was his Mamsha Chamuna in Yidin. He draws and brings and reveals the belief that Yidin has. As a pile sign, but my super pile, that amuna that every yid has, but not necessarily does it have an impact on their behavior. So Moshe Rabbeinu draws down and brings the amuna that it should actually affect them. As oich dart, 
where they have absolutely no vision to see the truth, to see godliness. And they were even also in a situation where they didn't have the right recognition. They were already the next generation that all they knew was Mitzrayim and the Nilos and nature. Hotarev Gitan, so Moshe Rabbeinu came and accomplished. As by Yidin, so leichten the Amuna Bashem, that that Amuna that a Yidin essence has should be revealed and should be should shine, should be active. Umedem, hab mezizezezezech kegen gestalt dixere from Parai. And with the Kayach of Moshe Rabbeinu, with this Amuna that's shining by them, they were able to go against the gzeira of Parai, which is that a Yid should be under the laws of nature. Although even before Moshe Rabbeinu comes, the Yidin have this Kayach of Amunah. As the Gemara tells us, every Yid, from the moment he's born, he's a believer, a, a son of a believer. Amunah, which is something which is hovering above the person, is not sufficient that it should actually change the behavior of the person. And here the Rebbe in order 40 brings a very important Maim Chazal, which is quoted very often in Chesidis. You find a Ganev, he's a thief, and he's tunneling under a person's house to go into the house to steal. And while he's doing his work as a Ganev, he calls out to Hashem, Hashem help me be successful in what I'm doing. Does he believe or does he not believe? If he believes, why is he doing what he's doing? He believes. But belief is something that comes from a very deep place in your neshama, but in the actual behavior of the person that's outside of the source of your neshama, it doesn't actually have an impact. Over there, the way a person is functioning, b'chitzayni, is in actuality, there's no, it is a certain disconnect of the amun of the neshama to his behavior. That's what it means when it says it's makif, it's so, so to speak hovering, it doesn't impact in bepnimius. So therefore the amuna that you didn't have in their essence is not enough to actually change their outlook and their behavior. Today, the Amunas will have my working in the Anhaga for mention, Levin and Anhaga for mention. In order that the Amunas that Ayid has should actually change your, the way your lifestyle and your behavior. Mozain Ure Amunas. This is what it means, faithful shepherd. So, Raya Mehemna also means that he feeds them Amunas. Re'e Amunas, that he feeds it just like when you eat something, you digest it, it becomes part of who you are. To bring down that amune, that it should become something that you identify with, that it becomes yours, that you, you, you start behaving this way. Besides meaning faithful shepherd, also means that he feeds amune. So this is Meish Rabbeinu, Gael and Shal Yisrael, or Meishi and Shal Yisrael. He's not just coming to save the Eden, the Gashmis from Mitzrayim, but he's coming to save them from the Gzeireh and from the real... A golos, the real Ruchni is the Gagolos that there was that Yidin should be under the laws of nature. The mid Fashtain, so we find also regarding Moshe Rabbeinu even before he comes to Mitzrayim, was the Pasik is Medayik. As Moshe Haya Raya Essain Yisrael, Chaisnai Kayem Midyan. What was Moshe Rabbeinu doing when he left Mitzrayim for many, many years? And he became a shepherd. So he was the shepherd of the sheep of his father-in-law Yisrael. And the Pasuk adds that who was his father-in-law? Kayan Midyan. He was a priest in Midyan. So you can ask the question. The fact that the Teireh tells us that he was a shepherd, that's understood. The Medrash explains this. This was preparing, these years was preparing Meishu Rabbeinu and actually testing him to see if he is the right leader to take Eden out of Mitzrayim. As the Medrash there describes that the way he treated his sheep, the attention he gave them for all their needs was to bring out in him this power of being the leader of Klal Yisrael. Aber, however, was in the Gea that Goshe, as that is given the Roya from Son Yisroy, and Alts Kayim Midian Dafke. Why is it letting us know that these were the sheep of his father in law, which was the priest in Midian? Why is that detail necessary? So the deeper understanding here is in Son Yisroy, then given Chele de Ktusha. So it says in the Medrash that in these sheep of Yisroy, there was there was powers of holiness that were there, or as the Lashon that it uses in many other places, holy sparks, Nitzaitzis of Kedusha that was there. Being their shepherd, Moshe Rabbeinu was elevating them. He was bringing them closer into holiness. 
On Dasa the Diok, Tsan Yisra Kayim Midyan. And therefore the Pasik tells us that these sheep belong to Yisra, the priest in Midyan, which means Afile Dinit Saitzis, was some Zakifunen by Kayan Midyan. Even those holy sparks that have fallen in the world to such a low place, even found by the Kaimel Avedizara, a priest for Avedizara. Biz, what kind of a priest was he? There was no Avedizara in the world that he didn't serve. Even the sparks that fell into the lowest place of Avedizara, Meisha Rabbeinu brings them close and elevates them out into holiness. That's who Moshe Rabbeinu is when he's preparing to become a leader of Klal Yisrael to take them out of Golis. So we see already this point that we're speaking about here, that Moshe Rabbeinu has the Kayach to elevate the Yidin from the Avedizara of Mitzrayim, of the nature of the Nilos. Moshe Rabbeinu was doing this with the sheep of Yisrael. And the far is thus given the Achana from Moshe Rabbeinu, to Zayin Arayif and Yidin in Mitzrayim. So this prepares Moshe Rabbeinu to be the faithful shepherd of Yidin, to take them out of Mitzrayim. And what does Mitzrayim here mean? As a fillet, Zayin digin a matzah, was is nittok ken riyeh, un a fillet nit ken a sogin a lakos, in a galos, the spiritual galos of Mitzrayim, where you can't see godliness, you can't even recognize and comprehend godliness at all. All you see is nature, the laws of nature. Is Moshe given the Raya Mehemna? Moshe Rabbeinu is the faithful shepherd. Vasatn zeh ma'ayir umamshich given the Amuna Bashem in Apnimius. And Moshe Rabbeinu awakens in them and draws out from them the belief that they have from the Eibister that it should come and affect them the Apnimius, that it should change their behavior, that they should start living life with this Amuna. That's the care of Moshe Rabbeinu, and this is the preparation of Moshe Rabbeinu that already began when he was working by Yisrael and elevating these holy sparks from David the Zara. Thus is their Kesha. Now coming back to the beginning, so this is the connection to Vishen di in Yonim. From the time of the birth of Moshe Rabbeinu. So we see the two things that was accomplished when he was placed in the Nilus. Bitla the Zara from Nilus, the fact that when his a basket with Meshar Benu in it flows into the Nilus. This is when the Avedizara of the Nilus is annulled. On Bitlag Zayde, and this also causes to annul the decree of Kalabena Yila Dayere Tashlichu, that all the baby boys th- should be thrown into the Nilus, that was also, was also annulled. Fal Zayzene Bipnimi is the Zelberinian. Being Mavatl Davidizara and being Mavatl Dixera of throwing the Yidden into the Nilus is one of the same thing. This whole decree of throwing the Yidden into the Nilus is Fabunda Medem, but the Yair is David Zara from Mitzrayim. The reason why Pare chooses this Gzeda is because he wants Yidden to be thrown into, to be immersed into the Avedizara of the nature of, of the world. So then when Moshe Rabbeinu, the faithful shepherd, is Nailad on Nimshach Gevarin to the Yidin and Golis Mitzrayim. When he was born, from the moment he's born, as the Rebbe in the Ha'ara 49 star brings from the Medrash, Mitchilas Briyasai Niskan Logolis Yisrael. He's born to be the redeemer of Yidin. So from the moment he's born, he has this effect. Bis zum Ikra Golis Vashibot. And the main effect is to take Yidin out of the main, the primary subjugation to the Mitzrayim, in Im Ya'ir, which is this Nilos, David Zara, the Kayach of the Teva, that the Yidin, that the Mitzrayim are trying to schlep the Yidin into. Hot Erge Gevn, them Kayach, so Moshe Rabbeinu empowers the Yidin to Mulcham Ahabim, Gegn David Zara from Nilos, to fight against this David Zara of the Nilos, and Bemele is Eich Batl Gevarin de Gzeire. So therefore, this annulled the decree of the Yidin being thrown into, being immersed into this Klippe, into the Nilos, because now the Yidin have the Kayach to fight this, so the Gzeire was Batl. Now the Rebbe applies this to our Aveda. That in for Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is Faran, Bukhol, Yoyim V'yoyim. This Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is something that we experience, so we should experience every single day. The obligation of Bukhol, Dor, Vadoir, and every single day, Chayi Vadam Luris Asatzma, Kilo Yatzam in Mitzrayim. The phone is Fashtandek, so we understand from this. As the Ale in Yonim Kloli Yimanal, all the main points we spoke about over here. The whole outlook of a Yid in this world, on nature. What is nature? Did he in a Lakos? Far the Yidid al Mitzrayim. So now going back to the stages of Klal Yisrael, there is the time period when Yaakov and his children and his family were in Eretz Yisrael. And there they see godliness openly before they come to Mitzrayim. The Yidid and Golis Mitzrayim, the Yidid and Golis Mitzrayim, they come down to Mitzrayim and then the Golis of Mitzrayim. 
So as the Rebbe pointed out before, that there are two stages to this. It's when they come down to Mitzrayim, but that generation that was in Eretz Yisrael is still alive, and then eventually they pass away, and then they enter fully into the Golas of Mitzrayim. And then Meish that comes and redeems Yidin from Mitzrayim. So you have this in the Aveda of every single Yid, every single day. Is the, the right order of the Aveda of every Yid, every single day is as follows. Beis HaKnesses. First you go to the Beis HaKnesses, the place of Davening. And then we Beis HaKnesses, the Beis HaMedrash. From the place of Davening you go to the Beis HaMedrash, which is a place for learning Teireh. On from Beis HaMedrash to Hanek Be'em, Minik Derech Eretz. And then there from the Beis HaMedrash, you go out into the world to, to work for business. And the Rebbe here brings from the Lashon that it says, and then in the Shulchan Aruch, in the Maim Chazal, Betchila, in the beginning, Kum Tavayda Satfila. First thing comes, the Aveda of Davening. Danach, Limudat Teireh. And then comes to learn Teireh. And Danach, the Yisaskos and Sarchi Panasa. And then a person could go out, and occupy himself with what he needs to get done for his parnasa. So what's the order of these three things? Durech Avedis Atfilah, what is the davening all about? Is Ayid, Mamshech, Gilea, Lukuz Benafshe. Davening is an experience of connecting to the Ebeshter on a level where he reveals and opens godliness to him. Biz, in the Oifum Fun Riyab and davening is to the extent that you connect to the Ebeshter openly and directly. Like when you have an open vision that you see right in front of you, so the connection of davening should be as clear and as direct as when you have that clear vision. Noch Diachon is from Faran Davening, and this comes after the preparations that a person makes before davening. If you just come to daven and say words, so then this doesn't, you don't have any connection, needless to say, a connection on this level of Riyya. But you prepare for davening. And then also, all the Psukim that we say in Psukim de Zimra, the first parts of davening, where we speak about praising the Ebishta and so on. So then, this proper preparation, kutmen to kriya shema, then you finally come to kriya shema, which is vas shema. When you say shema, is rasha tevis, su'u marem eneichem, even though the, the translation of shema means listen, but the rasha tevis of the word shema is, lift up your eyes, ru'u, to see. So not just to listen, but actually to see, to see godliness. Gili elekos bebchines to see godliness, to the Bedugmas Eretz Yisrael, similar to the way it was when they were in Eretz Yisrael, Kanal Sifei, a place where they saw godliness openly. Nachtem, following Shmei Nes, following Kriya Shema, that is, you come to Shmei Nesre. Tfilasah Midah, when you come and you daven Shmei Nesre, where you stand quietly in one place, which is Ka'avde Kami More, like a servant that's directly in front of his master. Bittel Gomer, you stand there with an absolute Bittel, you don't daven loud, there's no motion, there's no movement, just davening and speaking to the Ebishter with an absolute bittel. Biz, as bitchilasa, in the beginning of Shmei Nesra, or Kagdama, as an introduction to Shmei Nesra, Zokta, what do you say? Adna isfasai tiftach. The Ebishter will open my lips. It's not, I can't even open my lips myself. The Ebishter has to open my lips. Ufi is nor yagid v'yamshech t'hilasecha. And therefore then, my mouth will just say and draw down your praise that you've placed into my mouth. I myself have nothing to say, it's not me. The Eivishta opens my mouth and I speak. That's the level of bittel that there is when a person is davening Shmei Nesra. Then, noch following davening, gatemen up. So you, then you step away from them from this level of riyye that you have in Kriyashma. And then the absolute level of bittel in Shmei Nesra. And here to come down from davening, to bring this down into the world, so there's two stages to this. So I'll lift the first stage is medrish. Coming down from the davening into the Besam Medrish, which is Lumadat Taira to learn. But thus is Vikhmasi is Barakh Vedgenumen Durachavanas Vasagas Adam. The experience of learning Taira is bringing the wisdom of the Eibishter into your Metzius, into who you are, that you could understand the, the Eibishter's Taira. In other words, here the person can't come and sit in front of a Seifa and learn and just have absolute bittel. Adarabe, here a person has to learn and think and understand. Like Zayn Fashtan, so he's taking the Eibishter into him according to his comprehension. So that's bringing it down a level into the Metzius of the person. However, this Yedideh, Chaj di Dargafun Avonav Asage. 
over here, this level where it's about the person comprehending in his connection to the Eibishter, is a yiride, legabidem gilu fun riyel lekos, obit lagom of Bishasat Philip. This is a step away, a step down from that level where he sees the Eibishter. And he's with absolute bittle that he has in his davening. Doch, however, is in them fort nikke de pulas at fila. Here, when the person is learning after davening, this is not a yiride where he steps away from his davening completely. You can still see the effect of the davening in his learning. Der gilu yalakos benafshe, bishas at fila. Because he davens, and you have a revelation of godliness in your davening, virkt as the asag is alzayin kedeboi. So this affects also his learning, that when he learns, you can learn Taira, and since you're using your mind, your own comprehension, you could learn and come up with your own ideas and understand things that are not according to Taira. But if a person has the proper bitol in his learning, so then even when he learns and he is understanding, he will learn and understand and interpret things correctly according to the way they have to be al Taira. Now this is, this stage of Yirideh is al derech, the Yirideh lemitzrayim b'chaye Yaakov Abanov. When the Yidin come down from Eretz Yisrael into Mitzrayim, so they already are stepping away from the place where you have that open, clear connection to the Ebeshter, which is represented in the Davening, in the Shema Nesra, or before that in the Kriyishma. And here you're coming down to Mitzrayim, it's a Yiride. However, they're, they're the children of Yaakov and the generation that saw is still alive, meaning you're bringing that experience into the next stage. Over here, you're bringing the experience of the Davening into the learning Teira as well, to affect and to and to have the proper attitude in your learning. Bays, and then comes the next level of Yirida, the Nayid Gate, the Nochla Sokov. When Yid then goes down and out and away from his learning, also out into his business. Was done, so then, Mitzadim Helen, Vahestafan, and Hogasat Teva, because of the tremendous concealment that exists within nature. So here you're stepping away from your davening and your learning, and it's possible to forget of the godliness that is here, that's really present everywhere in the world. In order for a person to constantly remember as who that it's the Eibishter that gives you the power to accomplish anything. And everything you do in business should be according to what it says in Shulchan Aruch. As the Eibishter wants. So here you have to bring that Amuna that a Yid has that's with him constantly, that takes him wherever he goes. And that amuna has to be awakened and be drawn down in a pnimius that it should affect his behavior the entire day. So that's the third stage, and that's the golos that, uh, that uh, every yid experiences when he goes out into his work, away from his davening and away from his learning. And here's the kayach of Moshe Rabbeinu, the main effect of Moshe Rabbeinu is regarding this stage, to bring the kayach of Amuna for a yid, even when he's outside of the Beis HaKnesses and outside of the Beis HaMedrish, to have that Amuna wherever he goes. Thus is the Ayrav, as a yid, of Haris Nama from Kalanal and Avedis Hashem. So here's the important lesson that every yid has to take out from all of this in his Aveda. Aleph number one, Adar Vissen. What you must know is, as the Ravegen from Davenen, to go away from your place of Davening, from the Iyan Elokos, when you have an opportunity to, to speak to the Ebishter directly, to see openly, Betla Gomet Elokos, and also with an absolute Betla to the Ebishter, when you go away from that, you have to realize, I'm going down a level. Yes, what I'm doing is required according to Shulchan Aruch, that's the next stage of the day. Kanal b'shulchan aruch, hanek ben minik derecheretz. The Eibushter created the world in such a way that you have to then go out and then down and eventually into the world into business. Aber er darf es tom blois, but you only do this not because you desire this, not because your heart lies there. No, only weil er is kemaim razal benegei yirid lemitzrayim, just like Chazal tell us when when Yaakov and his family came down to Mitzrayim and bepashtus, and you also apply this in your aveda very simply. Onus apia diba. That I'm only going here because this is what Eivishter wants, by force, so to speak. I'm leaving the shul, I'm leaving this place where I naturally belong, where I feel at home, where I'm together with Hashem. And I'm going out into a world where it's dark and it's concealment and I don't see godliness, only because this is the Ratzin of Hashem. That's on one hand. This is the attitude of a Yid. You have to know where you feel at home, where you feel comfortable, where is your connection to the Eivishter, and where it's a Yid, where I really don't belong. Beis, but on the other hand, hot as a nit was to shrek for the yirida. 
You're going here and you're coming here and there's nothing what you have to be afraid of. Although this is a tremendous Yedidah, going from the Bittel Gomer of Shemayin Esra, down to the world where there's an absolute hell of a Hester, tremendous Yedidah with a great extreme. This is not a place where you see godliness. And while you're in business, even the comprehension, the recognition of godliness is also not necessarily there. His mind is preoccupied with thinking about the things that he's doing in his business. But when you awaken this power of Moshe that exists within the soul of every single Yid, so this reveals the Amunah you have in the Eibishter, more importantly, to bring this amuna that it should be fed, it should be satiate, it should satiate you, it should, it should be like something you digested and it becomes part of who you are, the way you function. And therefore this will pull you out of any personal exile that you have while you're out in the street and you become influenced by the darkness and the concealment in the world. So by, by elevating yourself and constantly reminding yourself of this amunah that you have inside your soul, so it elevates you out of your galos. Biz, azazet, b'chol in yonav. And you could see in everything you do, as tamid, eni Hashem alakecha, mereshu sashana, vadachri sashana. So you come to see, similar to what you can see in davening, the open connection to the Eibishter, you'll come to see also in everything you do outside that the eyes of the Eibishter are upon you constantly from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. You see the open Ashkachapratis of the Eibishter and everything you do, even in business. This is the personal Geula that a person can accomplish through awakening the Moshe and his soul. Then, from your own personal Geula, you come to the Geula, to the Geula Kaklalis, Al Yidei, Mashiach Tzedkeinu. To the final goal of through Mashiach Tzedkenu, Sheyelechenu, Lartzenu, Akdesha, which will lead us into the Holy Land, the Karev Mamish, speedily in our days.